everyone this is dr kazi and in this video we are going to learn about the four major type of receptors which are important in your pharmacology these are the ligand gated ion channel the g protein couple receptors the enzyme link receptors and the intracellular receptors we are going to study how these receptors perform their action when a drug binds with them let's start with the ligand gated ion channel how these channels perform their action when a drug binds with these receptors have a look at this diagram now these receptors have the extracellular portion onto which the ligand will bind the ligand can be any molecule it can be hormone it can be a drug when the ligand binds with the receptor it will cause the regulation of the pore size it will change the pore size in other words it will open the ion channels the ions which are present outside of the cell or in abundance outside of the cell they will move inside this is how the ligand gated ion channel perform their action very simple to understand now this phenomena is used in the action potential generation or the contraction of your skeletal and the cardiac muscles let's discuss it with the help of an example acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter it will bind with the nicotinic receptors have a look at this diagram when the acetylcholine which is a neurotransmitter bind with this blue color nicotinic receptor the sodium is in abundance outside of the cell the concentration of the sodium is greater outside of the cell so when acetylcholine which is a ligand bind with this nicotinic receptor it will regulate the pore shape open the ion channel and the sodium will move inside this is the sodium influx on the other hand the same acetylcholine will cause the potassium outflux when it binds with this blue color nicotinic receptor the potassium is in abundance inside the cell the concentration of potassium is greater inside of the cell so when the acetylcholine binds with the nicotinic receptor they will regulate the pore shape open the ion channel and the potassium will move outside of the cell now this is also used during the action potential generation during the nerve transmission and during the contraction of your skeletal muscle let's discuss another example the agonist can be any molecule which activates the receptor when the agonist binds with the GABA receptor the chlorine which is in abundance outside of the cell or in the extracellular space they will move inside of the cell by opening of these channels or the shape of the pore size is changed when the agonist bind with the GABA receptor this is used during the hyperpolarization of the neuron now let's learn about the g protein couple receptor how these receptors perform their action when a drug binds with these receptor this topic is very similar to the normal physiology and the endocrinology so no need to worry about the g protein has three subunit the alpha subunit the beta subunit and the gamma subunit three different subunits so it has different function the gamma and the beta subunit will anchor this g protein into the cell membrane on the other hand the alpha subunit is attached with the GDP also known as the guanosine diphosphate now this whole G protein is linked with the couple receptors called the G protein couple receptor these are the transmembrane protein seven turns inside and outside of the cell now this couple receptor which I have shown with the orange color has two parts the extracellular portion and the intracellular portion the extracellular portion has the ligand binding site onto which the ligand will bind on the other hand the intracellular portion will interact with this whole G protein and perform the physiological and the biochemical reaction let's study it when the ligand bind with the extracellular portion of this G protein couple receptor the intracellular portion will interact with this G protein now there are three types of G protein GI known as the G 
inhibitory protein GS known as the G stimulatory protein and the GQ. So the ligand bind with the receptor and it depends whether the G stimulatory protein is activated or the G inhibitory protein is activated. Let's assume the G stimulatory protein is activated. Now we know that the gamma and the beta subunit anchors this whole protein in the cell membrane. On the other hand, the alpha subunit is attached with the GDP. When the ligand will bind, it will interact with the G protein, the couple receptors, and the GDP is replaced by the guanosine triphosphate. Guanosine diphosphate replaced with the guanosine triphosphate. Now, this whole subunit, alpha and the attached GDP, will detach from the gamma and the beta subunit and move towards this green color adenyl cyclase. It's an enzyme. Have a look. It will detach from the gamma and the beta subunit along with the guanosine triphosphate. It will move towards this green color adenyl cyclase. Now adenyl cyclase when activated will convert the adenosine triphosphate into cyclic AMP and it will release to inorganic phosphate. Now this cyclic AMP will perform the physiological and the biochemical reaction. For example, phosphorylation or the dephosphorylation of protein and the protein kinase. Now, when the ligand is detached from this ligand binding site of the coupled receptor, the adenyl cyclase is deactivated. The alpha subunit along with the guanosine diphosphate because it is releasing one inorganic phosphate so the triphosphate is converted into the diphosphate the whole complex moves again towards the gamma and the beta complex and attach with it this is how the g protein couple receptors perform its action now the enzyme link receptors is again very easy to understand it's a dimer consists of multiple subunits now the multiple subunits have the intracellular enzyme activity or the cytosolic enzyme activity. It has the tyrosine kinase activity which is found in the intracellular portion. The example is the insulin receptors. Have a look. The insulin receptor consists of the alpha subunit to alpha subunit and the two beta subunit. When this insulin binds with the two alpha subunit the intracellular portion or the cytosolic portion of the beta subunit are linked with the tyrosine kinase it will cause the autophosphorylation of this structure and multiple reaction which will result in the physiological and the biochemical reaction the intracellular receptor as the name suggests are the receptors which are found inside of the cell have a look because the hormones or the drug these are lipophilic have a look the ligand hormone or the drug it is lipophilic so they have no problem crossing this plasma membrane because the plasma membrane is also lipid in nature so the hormones and the drug they will dissolve or they will pass through this plasma membrane the receptors are found in the cytosol portion or the cytoplasm they will bind with the receptors and this whole complex have a look will move inside of the nucleus where their target is the transcription factors they will bind with the dna and the dna will generate the messenger rna and a simple transcription process occurs the messenger rna is translated with the help of ribosome simple transcription translation process and it will generate the new protein this is how the intracellular receptor responds to certain drugs please do like share and subscribe and i will see you in the next video